Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, depending on what time I've got you here. My name is Cassie Larson, and this is the Passion Podcast, PORG for short. During this podcast, I will explore fandom theories, a topic that brings me personal joy. My fandom theory that I will be talking about is the Chicago Strangler. If you end up enjoying this episode, you might want to watch another one. Make sure you try to catch the rest on WJHS915.org. Um, trigger warning for um, domestic violence, sexual assault, um, and murder in general. If you are uncomfortable or don't think you'll be able to listen to that, then I wouldn't carry on with this episode, um, and then we'll carry on. I am joined here today by Eddie, hey. Sal, Hello. and Haley. Hi. I will be telling them and you a little bit about the Chicago Strangler. I got this information from CBS Chicago, Grunge, and Unsolved at Penn State. So basically, I'm just going to go in of who the Chicago Strangler is. So since 2001, at least 55 female victims have been linked to what appears to be a single killer. All of these are from the southwestern Chicago, and the area that is well known for its high crime rates. And nearly all were strangled to death. Their ages span from just 18 years old all the way up to 58 years old. And most of them were African-American women who either work in the sex industry or have previous issues with the law. With knowing that the women worked in the sex industry or had previous issues with the law, the criminal may think that they are like the angel of death, and by killing them, they might think that they're helping other people. Their bodies were found spread out around the Chicago area, which is a partial explanation for why police did not connect them until 2018. They were not even hidden in many cases, as most were found in alleys, parks, or dumpsters. This shows that the person did not care about the bodies being found, or they wanted them to be, considering that he left the bodies in public places. The women who were victims all, all belonged to groups uh, that were not high priority for the police, so little evidence is known about their cases, which makes finding the criminal even harder when we don't have all the evidence. This task force is overseen by the FBI and and has investigated a number of suspects, but none of them have been connected successfully to all the killings. There was DNA evidence collected at the scenes of several of the crimes, but had no matches in the FBI database. That means they have not likely been convicted or suspected of a past crime. This information does little to help narrow down the suspect pool in such a heavily populated area, however. Despite the highly trained task force, the public has done arguably more work on this case than the law enforcement. Hmm. This case is practically difficult because in serial killings, especially of this high of a problem, it is more likely that a killer has never met the victim and that they have a clear connection to each other. A lack of physical evidence collected makes it near impossible to find a suspect, but with how many victims have been placed and how many are likely to come until the criminal is caught, this may not be a problem if if these cases were also being investigated thoroughly. Unfortunately, the police are putting very little effort into their investigations, though so these murders may go, go on unsolved for years. Now, let's look into some theories that not only I have thought of, but also people on the internet have thought of. So one of these theories that the media has found, Chicago reporters reported that Hargo used his skills to great success in Gary, Indiana. His murder accountability project assisted in the 2010 capture of Gary Ridgway, the Green River Killer who also focused his murders on sex workers. Um, The police had not seen the pattern in some 70 murders before Hagrove stepped in. CBS Chicago quoted him as saying, we have total radio silence from those guys. Some people think that he might have taken a break and tried to settle down in Chicago, but could not control his criminal cravings and had to strike again. Um, By the time they were on his tail, uh, he may have left Chicago, and he might have been caught and just spent a little time in prison for other crimes. Hmm. Um, According to the Chicago Reader, the killings stopped in 2014, only to pick up again in 2017, which signifies to Thomas Grove that the killer had been maybe imprisoned or gone to jail and released. 2017? Yeah. 
recently? That was like, this yeah. like that is this has been going ago. Yeah, this has been going on till, like, since like 2001. And what? They I think thought this that's... was happening in the 90s or 80s. No, this has that's... been going on for a while. That's weird. And that they're pretty sure there are some still like murders in Chicago that also are kind of like this. So they don't know if it could that's definitely be how still that it, person how do they know or it could it's be the copycat. Same person? I mean, as you said, it could be like just a different person trying yeah, to Yeah, like a copycat. Them. That's yeah. seen a that's like, seen that's a lot. Seen a lot. Listen, I've watched Carrying enough on. criminal minds same. to know that copycats <laughs> happen a lot. Yeah, but like again, like they're like obviously like there's things like police can't share to the media yet. Mm-hmm. So I'm just guessing like then there's like certain things at the crime scene that's like maybe like the criminal's leaving his like Whatever they call him, criminal the minds. He's leaving his They're like, trace it, like their yeah, their signature. Trace it. his yeah, signature. signature. He's leaving his signature, so that could be one. Um, but yeah, so it was so the killing stopped in 2014. But picked up in strangulation 2017. is a very common way to kill someone. This is really graphic, but, but strangulation is a really common and easy way to kill someone. So what if someone just you know, well, yeah, but the, the, the targets were all, all the same. Yeah, the targets, but, and then also, like, the way they found their bodies, like, but again, some were, like, found in parks, some were found in dumpsters, some were, like, mm-hmm. even set on fire, like. Yeah, and it's all in the same area. As I said before, copycats are really similar, or, like, well, they're really common. So yeah. They could have easily just been like, oh, I live here, I could easily copycat, and they wouldn't catch me. Because they're still trying to find the person that they think is them. If I do enough to create it just like how we've been told that it's yeah. made, mm-hmm. they won't know it's me. So some of these could not even be him. Bless you. <laughs> Bless you. Okay, but then going back up again on like the prison thing or like the jail, and Thomas thought that like maybe he was in jail and like got out again. Um, the police, Chicago PD, however, just saw as typical city violence Hmm. um and now on to a second theory which i honestly think is the actual Mm -hmm. reason and like who this person is um darren devon van in 2017 was caught in gary indiana trying to strangle a 19 year old prostitute and also then confessed to the murder of six other women in gary um his murder routine is very similar to the chicago strangler And Gary, Indiana is not that far away from Mm -hmm. Chicago. And people think one of his victims was Grendel Williams. Uh, She was a woman who was killed in Chicago. Um, They found her halfly dressed, covered in blood and signs of sexual assault. Um, Her her, she had skin under her nails. Uh Um, Later on, there was another murder. Um, That was that was Darren uh, Mm -hmm. Devon Van. And um, and they got DNA from that prostitute, like from him, like from him, and it matched the DNA from Gwendol's murder. Um, and they tra- they also traced Darren back for like other crimes he might have committed, mm-hmm. and they found that um, that in uh, he was convicted in Detroit for armed robbery in 1980, and then again in 2014 for check fraud, which I think. If he's convicted of that, he's obviously going to go to jail. Yeah. And 2014, he's obviously going to go to jail for that. Mm-hmm. The killing stopped in 2014 and picked up again in 2017, which is when he was convicted of the check No, crime. I would just like to say, how far apart is 1980 to 2014? That's a while. So he has to be 30, 30, 30, 30, 34 yeah. years. I was going to say, isn't that like a long time? Um, Would he even be physically able? Da-da-da. In September, the suspect was arrested. Like, he ended up, they let, ended up letting him go. Like, they caught him, and then they let him go. I don't know why the media didn't say. So they let him go, so he was just off, but he's, they still had, like, tracks on him. So they ended up catching him in um, Tampa Bay, Florida. What? Yeah, he went all the way down there. And in an interview um, with the suspect, again, he denied killing um, um, Glenda Williams or even being in Chicago. But again, the DNA test confirmed that he was with Williams, um, but the office denied to imprison him what? since he was trialed in Florida and not in Chicago where the crimes took place. You're kidding me. That so is I don't, everyone, ridiculous. I know, like everything matches up. DNA, place of times, his in this way part, of murder, how many people he murdered, everything matches up, but he can't be arrested because he's in a different state. This guy's still kicking. He could do more. Yes, he's, exactly. He's, he is a felon, a, 
a crazy person. I, I know. No, if you no, just cry, man. Like, like, can't yeah. they Trial apprehend them? him? Yeah, I know. I don't know. This is like where I'm like, I get mad. I'm like, it's why so did they do up. so? I'm pretty it sure so it's perfectly up. legal to apprehend someone and bring them back to the state that they but committed the crime in. Yeah, to I remember it's last the fact year. That they're not doing anything. No, like. In the Constitution, it says you can't trial someone again unless you have, like, perfect reason or, like, evidence. There they is have so I know, much. they do, but I feel like they already evidence. put all the evidence in the last trial, and then they can't. why wasn't he arrested for that? I don't know. That makes me, that makes me upset, though. No, that is there's, horrible. There's DNA evidence. The timelines the system match is up messed up perfectly. Yeah, the system is just messed up. Anyway. Why do you think he went to Florida? Probably to escape this. I know, but then, so my theory then, again... Like I said, I do think that Darren Devon Van did kill all these 50-something women. Mm-hmm. What, 55 <laughs> women? Um, and maybe even more today. I mean, you never know how many bodies have been found and haven't been connected yeah. either. Just-